I'm sure. I'm sure that's in in Romans yeah, and ninth yeah, chapter yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. I've got it here. Mhm. You want it now? Yeah, yeah. Bring it out. <laughs> this is Romans chapter nine. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to the point. Verse four says, "Actually, let me read from the top." So I say the truth in Yahweh Shai. I lie not. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Ghost. I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Yahweh Shai for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. Okay, so. We, like we read here, it says, and the glory, the glory pertains to the Israelites. Yeah, yeah, you got that, get that Isaiah 66. All right, so Isaiah 66 and 10. Rejoice ye with Jerusalem and be glad with her, all ye that love her. Rejoice for joy with her, all ye that mourn for her, that ye may suck and be satisfied with the breast of our constellation. Consolation. That ye may milk out and be delighted with the abundance of her glory. Right, and that's talking about Israel, because the scriptures tell you in the New Testament about what you had. Um, the uh, what was his name again? That was waiting for the consolation of Israel. Uh, yeah. That's um. That was, in Luke. that was in Luke as well. It's all about the consolation of Israel, man. The glory, the glory was prophesied for Israel, man. All right. And we could be here all day going through all the scriptures that mention the glory that's to come for Israel. And Zacharias. Yeah, Zacharias. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel. All right. So we see here, I mean, we could go on and on and on all day going into scriptures about the salvation for Israel and then the glory which was promised to Israel. Like we could go on all day, but it says to be accomplished in the future. So that salvation, that glory was prophesied by the prophets. Now it says here, the prophesying of the New Testament prophets was both a preaching of the divine counsels of grace already accomplished. Accomplished by who? The Messiah, by, by Yahweh Shai. He came and laid the foundation of salvation in the sacrifice or, um, he made on the cross, man. And the, deliver, the delivering of, of the, the word, right? The gospel unto the saints, man. All right? It says already accomplished and foretelling of the purposes of God in the future. Now, what was the purposes that were left for the Most High? The complete fulfillment of the salvation. And what you're going to find out is that this is the, the this this whole thing. What is showing you right here is the same future that the prophets in the Old Testament prophesied about is the same future. That the prophets in the New Testament were speaking about. It's just now they had the understanding of who it was that was going to fulfill these prophecies, man. It was Yahweh Shai, the author and finisher of our faith. See, what they want to try and make you think is that the New Testament is some new thing. Like there's some new uh, 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 future that was predicted in the New Testament that's different to that of the Old Testament. That's what they would have you believe because they know that their, their doctrine that they teach in these churches does not add up when you go into these prophecies. That's why whenever you start bringing out them prophecies in Isaiah, Jeremiah, Psalms, all over the, the boat, yeah, these people, what's the first thing they say? Oh, that's the Old Testament because what their, what their belief, hey, hey, can you get me that scripture where Paul says, um, in the way which you call heresy, so worship I after the, the, um, just type in heresy and you, yeah, Acts, yeah, get that for me. Because they tried saying Paul was a heretic, but Paul was, 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 um, constantly, basically, uh, in, in agreement with the Holy Scriptures of old. Let's get that. Right, Acts 24 and 14, but this I confess unto thee. That after the way which uh, they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. And that still applies to us today because a lot of these Israelite groups, first of all, they call us heretics because we say that Israel is going to be among all nations. They're going to look like other nations. They call us heretics. And they try, they try, nah, mate, nah, we're, 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 what we're bringing out is exactly what is written in the law and the prophets, man. Is it not written that Israel would be scattered among all the nations? Israel is swallowed up among the nations? 
And is it not written that it's by the word that the Lord is going to bring back the, 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 um, the, the, the Israelites, man? He's going to sift the Israelites from among all nations, man? So what we're teaching is according to the scripture, man. But they call us heretics. It's the same thing with Paul. All right? You got something? No. All right? But what I wanted to do, since we brought that out, in fact, you can get that scripture in your pocket for, you know where it says the word of the Lord is constant. I think that second is just, uh, might be the eighth or the ninth chapter. We can get that. I, I, what I got right here is the, the Greek New Testament fourth revised edition. Yes, the Greek. <laughs> and this is a good um, edition too. Um, let me give, give you the information. Yeah, 8 and 22. There it is, the Greek New Testament. All right? Mm -hmm. That's the information right there. You want to get that first? You can yeah. get that. It's Second Ezra chapter 8 and verse, verse, read from verse 21. Mm -hmm. So whose throne is inestimable, whose glory may not be comprehended, before whom the host of angels stand with trembling, whose service is conversant in the wind and fire, whose word is true, and sayings constant. Constant. The sayings of the Lord is constant. That's why the scripture said there's no what shadow of um Oh man, what's the, what's the, I forgot exactly how it goes. Shadow of turning. So, something like that. I'm trying to remember the exact quote. But basically the Lord don't change. So if the Lord prophesy a thing that this is what's gonna happen, ultimately that's what's gonna happen. The word of the Lord ain't going to say, oh, I'm only going to say, I'm, the, the, I'm chosen Israel. I'm going to save Israel. They're going to be saved. The other nations are going into slavery. But then in the back end, the Lord's going to basically come with a whole completely different I thing. That. I got that. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. James chapter 1 verse 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness a shadow of turning. Yeah, and that's what basically Christianity and the doctrine of Christianity is showing what variableness and shadow of turning. Yeah, they're always talking about change and yeah. modernizing and because it's like the mo they're basically trying to make it look like the Most High changed mm -hmm. his whole plan from the Old Testament into the New Testament. No, the New Testament was his plan. Mm -hmm. It was always his plan. The New Testament is recorded in Jeremiah the thirty first chapter, man. And who was the New Testament for? The Israelites. Tells you that in Hebrews, tells you that in Jeremiah 31. So what, what's the deal here? Now, anyway, we got here the, the Greek New Testament. Now, the reason I, I'm not going to read the Greek. I'm going to go to the back. I'm going to show you something. When you go to the back, there's, a, there's a two sections in the back. There's one called... There's one called the Index of Quotations. Let me see if I can get it to uh, focus right here. I'm struggling to focus, man. Oh, okay, that's how you do it? Yeah. yeah. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> all right. And as you see here, it says Index of Quotations. And what it does is, it will go through from Genesis, right? So you got the Old Testament order. So it'll start from Genesis and it'll go through places where there are direct quotations in the New Testament. Yeah? And then it will go the other way around. So it will go to the New Testament and show you back direct quotations from the, from the New Testament back. All right? Showing you that the New Testament and the Old Testament are one. In terms of the doctrine. It's one. Because they're constantly quoting. It's a, it's a, the New Testament is filled with direct quotations. From the Old Testament. From the prophets. Okay. You see. And then even worse than that. You got what's known as the index of illusions. And verbal parallels. So these are not direct quotes but allusions and verbal parallels back to something a prophet said. And you see it right here. Again, the New, the, the, the New Testament writings and the 